Everyone seems to be thinking that Moxley's going to beat Orange Cassidy for that title here at one of the next two pay-per-views, but I will be sad because this Orange Cassidy title run is an all-timer. He faced A.R. Fox in the opener. They did this long video with Darby explaining why he owed everything to A.R. Fox. A.R. Fox took him in when he was living in his car. There might not be a Darby without A.R. Fox, so he wanted a favor. Orange Cassidy does the match. This match is so great. They're just countering everything. This is awesome. Chance is awesome. Finally, Orange pins this guy. His 27th title defense. And Orange shakes his hand afterwards, puts the sunglasses on him. He starts celebrating. Fox crumples up the sunglasses, and he knocks out Orange. Leaves to a chorus of boos. <laughs> so Darby then runs down, starts shoving him. Ask him what's going on. You're embarrassing me. Chews him out. Tells him to get backstage. And then Moxley hits a ring and he absolutely kills Orange Cassidy with the lariat and the Death Rider. Orange is dead for the moment. <laughs> and we have Jericho and Don Callis backstage. And Don convinces him to do a match teaming up with Takeshita. And after Jericho agrees, he goes, I got a great, I got a great set of opponents, Sammy and Daniel Garcia. Now Jer Jericho's like, oh, man. Wasn't expecting that. Then Don does the old, well, you don't have to do the match. Jericho's like, I'll do it. Don says, man, that's great. Celebrate, I got something for us. It is an oil painting of Don and Chris Jericho built like Greek gods with their flowing 1995 hair. <laughs> and yes, bad news is smiling down from heaven. Oh, my God. Absolutely died. <laughs> and Jericho looks at this and he goes, yeah, I can't really carry that around everywhere. Don goes, don't worry. I got a perfect place for it. I'll handle this. He goes off. But, hey, did you notice, and I could be wrong about this, did it seem like Don's scar was more pronounced this week? I think that, uh, I think that let's not be fools here. They're putting some makeup on that thing. But you know what? Who cares? This is You think a, Heath Ledger really had a cut from here to here? <laughs> it's fake. An incredible segment when you just look at the subtle sliminess of Don Callis. It was excellent. This was an excellent segment. We had Claudio and Wheeler doing a promo. Don't mess with the Blackpool Combat Club. Moxley celebrated the death of Orange and said, Pac, you guys are going to regret it. That's a lot of people feuding in one segment. Hook uh, apparently is taking a train somewhere. <laughs> and old Jack, Hook. Jack Perry comes out. And it was a weird promo. First, he like totally buries the FTW title. He says, this is not what I was talking about when I said a singles title. But then he goes, ever since I touched it, it's the real deal. So I don't know if he likes the FTW title or not. And then, I presume Taz must have known about this. But man, he goes... I'm the best wrestler to get within 100 feet of this belt. Taz, I'd run circles around you and all your dirtbag friends back in the day. And they cut to Taz. And Taz just like, he goes, whatever. I died. The way he was smiling, he probably didn't know it was coming. Because that, yeah, that was good. So Jerry Lynn comes out, ECW chance. He says, you keep talking, you're going to get your butt kicked. Jungle Boy says, who's going to kick my butt? And Jerry drops the mic. Now, they very much teased that these guys were going to have a match next week. But then, when the show was over, they put up the graphic that just said a face-to-face. -face. So, I think Jack's just going to beat him up. Britt Baker did a promo. She shall remind us it is the Brit show. Pac versus Gravity after all these years. I was actually disappointed. They only got like four minutes, two of which was during the break. And then Pac just gave him the top rope brain buster, brutalizer, submitted him. That was it. That I tell was, you what, I, I'd sad. like to see Gravity a little bit more than Commander. And this is nothing against Commander, but I, I want to say he's the one-trick pony. But Gravity seemed to have a... I really haven't seen him before, so to actually see him out there and going, I'd kind of like to see more of him. Then we had MJF, Cole, and FTR doing promos for Saturday. So... MGF grabs the mic from Cole, and man, he buries, particularly Dax. 
Like all he really said about cash was that you know, you were you have a mullet in 2023, which is not actually that unusual. Like Jay Uso oh. has a mullet. Don't you watch hockey? But then, man, he goes, Dax, yours Yosemite Sam looking butt. headed Yosemite Sam. He goes, I'm going to take my fist on the 29th. I'm going to punch you so hard in the face, you'll have no choice but to spit out CM Punk's jock strap. Ooh. We're winning the titles on Saturday because we're better than you and you know it. And then Cole says, You know, Max, when this started, it was about the title, but we became friends. Never thought I'd enjoy this as much as I did. So I just want you to know, I mean, I meant nothing holding that title. I was just giving it to you. Your friendship means the world to me. You're not just a friend. You're one of my best friends. And MJF says, you know, I've been thinking a lot too. Win, lose, or draw this Saturday, I'm giving you a rematch for this title because I know how much it means to you. And Cole is so excited, and then Roderick comes up in his neck brace, and he starts screaming at MJF. He doesn't trust him. And Cole pulls him off. And basically tells him, you're pushing me away, dude. I love you like a brother, but man, you're just out of your mind here. So he goes to leave. Roddy grabs him. Cole shoves his hand off and says, boundaries. Look, I know a lot of this has been played for yucks and laughs between MJF and Cole, but they've had these cameras following them around. I kind of would have liked to add some drama and some gravity to this, at least a little bit more, is after they cut that promo, because Cole was just staring a hole through the camera as MJF was doing his promo, where they could have broken that up and started walking away, and then Cole pulls him away, and then Roddy comes in, and they do some of that to make it, again, it just make it a, add some drama to it. I wish they kind of would have went a little bit more in that direction, although I still think a direction that they're going in here is I could, look, Roddy is Roddy is going to go with one of those two guys. It's just a matter of who the bad guys are going to be. And at this point, boy, Adam Cole and Roderick Strong, it just, how does Britt Baker then play into that later? You know, if, if they're going to turn them heel, I don't think they will. It'll probably be MJF, but Cole as a heel with Strong, man, that's not the worst thing in the world. And if you're looking for a big match for Wembley, even though it makes no sense, Jamie Hayter against Britt Baker would be that match, although they'll probably do Tony Storm. Then we had FTR doing a promo, and Cash buries MJF. He likes Adam Cole, but he does not trust MJF at all. And then Dax cuts his promo and says, Adam, you're an all right guy, but you beat me, and you're not going 2-0. and And I'm not going to yell and scream like Max. I'm not going to get all gimmicked up. This is real life for me. I saw that dancing you did. Thought it was hilarious, making a mockery of the tag team division, tag team wrestling, tag team titles. <laughs> there will be no singing and dancing on Saturday. It's going to be a fight. I'm going to beat the S out of you, Max. And if you said something about my wife and daughter, I'm going to rip your eyeballs out. For different reasons, all sorts of different reasons, they have blended real life in the drama of wrestling very well, actually, between these four. I'm looking forward to that match. Swerve and Darby, they had a great match. They Surprise. are incapable of not having a great match. And then finally, Darby hits the stunner. They fight up top. Swerve gives him a DVD off the uh, post to the ring apron. <laughs> Nana takes the ref. Nick goes after Nana. And a masked dude posts Darby. Swerve hits a JML driver for the pin. Masked dude gets in the ring. It is A.R. Fox. Swerve and Fox destroy Darby. They hit Nick in the face with the skateboard. AR Fox now part of the embassy. I hope we see something on Rampage or Collision about AR Fox being very upset with the way Darby Allen came at him. The man was emotional after losing a match. All he did was crunch up some glasses, and you go out there and you berate that man like that? I'd get inside my feelings too. Smart move by Mogul Associates. Jericho met with the Appreciation embassy, Society. Whatever. Long story short, they want him to get his stuff together and figure this out, or they're no longer giving him 100%. We had Britt versus Taya, which we talked about it's earlier. It's a very sad situation when Daddy Magic's nipples aren't hard anymore. We can't, we can't have this. Britt countered into the lockjaw off the road to Valhalla for the submission. Fans were to the finish. Then they focused in on that sign, book the women better, or whatever it was. So, and, again, uh, production could probably, you know, you know. Perfect. I, I, I got to keep doing this review, but I will say one thing going back to what I said in the previous segment. The other thing with the women is it doesn't have to be intricate. It doesn't have to be complicated. The fans just want to see something. Like you have a lot of women. I know some of them are hurt, 
but this can be done. Just do some simple stories. Everything's all right. No, everything no, does not need to be interconnected. Maybe no kendo stick matches, though. Sheeta and Nyla Rose are having another match coming up. And we've got the tag team. Actually, they could have a kendo stick match. Battle Royal. And then, yeah, best friends Moxley and Claudio and the Lucha Bros. We talked about this earlier as well. And uh, the match itself was great. They actually kind of did it backwards. Like, usually you you end with the spot where everybody hits a big move on everybody else. They actually did that in, like, the first minute. And then they, you know, got some heat, best friends, everything. And then we had the uh, the big spots there at the end. And uh, Orange came out, as noted. And, man, Orange comes out for revenge. He did not get any revenge. He came down to the ring and... And Moxley grabbed him, and he beat the bejesus out of this guy. And he's just killing him. And then they, they have another shot, and Moxley just like, he's yes! literally just choking him to death. Right before the finish, he's just holding him down there like a child, like a bully on a, uh, on a kid at school. Just It was terrible. It was he terrible, squeezed terrible the night. pulp out of that orange. Yes, he did. He juiced orange. He did. And then uh, Pent hit Trent with the package <laughs> pile driver and won. And now we have a three-way next week. Yeah. Look, that, uh, you know, Jerry Lynn, obviously they're telling a story there. That was probably underwhelming for some people as far as he and Jungle Boy. But, it's look, it's a, it's a match. It's a good match to have. And I do like that A.R. Fox has probably deserved a shot for a long time. I don't know why it took so long for him to get to this moment. But, you know, he has done a lot of training with Moose and Austin Theory and A.C. Mack. He's had some guys there. Leon Ruff is another one of his guys. But Alex Kane and MLW now, he and Nick Wayne, I think him helping Nick, it, 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 all in that storyline, Nick's in there with the best people he could possibly be, with people he already knows and has worked with, with Darby Allen and Swerve, and then with A.R. Fox's experience and his style of working, which is, again, very much what Nick Wayne is, is doing right now. I think this is the best possible scenario, and I know a lot of people are probably going to roll their eyes at Nick Wayne being involved in going through a gauntlet, possibly of Mogul Embassy people. But that's also not the worst thing in the world, as long as it's not him getting killed by Khan all the time. should mention, by the way, a couple of injuries, including Leo Rush, who just won the X Division title. That stinks. He is injured, and he's going to be uh. out of action. Although he said it was only going to be about a month. Good. He called it a not serious injury, which could be like a very minor uh, separated shoulder, because those do sure. heal quick. Man, but uh, the other one is is Scorpio Sky. So I don't know what happened to Scorpio Sky, except he got injured yesterday. And uh, I think it was yesterday. He was injured during the Rampage taping. So, yes, it was yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Yeah. And I was told that when it happened, they were worried that it was bad. But today it looks like it may not be that bad. So it looks like he's going to be all right. So uh, maybe they'll do that match uh, sooner rather than later. But Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands, 
of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio, all for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.